Shear locks are steel elements welded to the underside of base plates. They are designed to transfer shear loads to the concrete support. The design of shear loads was previously included in ACI 349, but now it's included in the latest version of ACI 318 2019. So how do you design shear logs? What are the new requirements in ACI 318? What are the limit states that need to be checked? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to review the latest provision in ACI 318-2019 regarding the design of shear logs. Let's get started. For small to moderate shear loads in a column-based plate, the shear load can be resisted by the anchor rods, but in the presence of high shear loads, the anchor rods may not be the best solution, basically because the anchor rods are mainly subject to tension and the interaction between tension and shear greatly reduces the capacity of anchor rods to resist the shear. In those cases, it's justified to use shear locks. A shear lock can be used in a casting place embed plate, as in this case, or as a post-installed base plate. This is the typical case of column-based plates in buildings and industrial facilities, where the anchor rods are set in the concrete first, and then the column and base plate are installed later. In this case, a notch in the concrete support is necessary to fit the shear lock, and very often this can be seen as a problem in the construction. So well detailed drawings are necessary to install shear locks in a structure. These are the limit states that need to be checked in the design of shear locks. The shear lock needs to be checked for shear and for bending, the shear and bending capacities depend on the material properties and the geometry of the log itself. And particularly the shear capacity needs to be checked thoroughly to avoid non-ductile uh, failure. When the shear load is applied, the shear log transfers the load directly in bearing to the concrete support. So the concrete bearing capacity needs to be checked in this area. The new ACI 318-2019 limits the bearing area that can be used in the calculations. The bearing depth cannot be larger than two times the thickness of the shear log. If the shear log has stiffeners, then the bearing area is as shown here, two times the shear log thickness at each side of the stiffener. This is an important modification in the latest ACI provisions because it doesn't matter how deep the shear log is, the effective bearing area is limited as shown here. Another very important limit state that needs to be checked in the design of shear logs is the concrete breakout. It's based on the assumption that a failure plane is developed both in plan and in elevation. In plan view, the failure plane is developed at an angle of 35 degrees with respect to the plane of the shear log. In elevation view, the failure plane is developed at an angle of 35 degrees with respect to the vertical. In addition to these limit states, it is necessary to check the capacity of the weld between the base plate and the shear log, as well as the minimum weld size requirements in ACI 318. I have prepared an example in ASIP steel to show the design of shear logs. This is a base plate 17 by 17 on a concrete support, and the base plate is eccentric on the support, as shown here. I specify some materials and anchor rods, and I specified also some, some loads a vertical load in compression and also a shear load in uh, X direction. If we go to the anchorage tab, go to the shear analysis tab, he will specify that the shear will be resisted by a shear log and friction. I specified a shear log 12 inches wide and 6 inches high. The thickness is 1 inch and the fillet weld size between the shear log and the base plate is 5 sixteenths. If we go to the at a glance tab, we can see here in the anchorage design that everything is passing in the anchorage, both in tension and in shear. If we go to the condensed tab, this is the anchorage design section. Here we can see the shear analysis. This is the applied shear force, 22 kips. The compression force is 30 kips. So 11.3 kips are resisted by friction and 10.7 uh, kips resisted in, uh, by the shear log. These are the limit states that were already discussed, steel flexure, steel shear, the weld strength, 
the concrete bearing and the concrete breakout. These are the ratios. We can see here that the controlling ratio is concrete breakout 0.78. We go to the detail tab, scroll down to the anchorage design area. This is the tension analysis for the anchor rods. Scroll down to the shear analysis for the shear log plus friction. These are the limit states, shear log in flexion, shear log in shear, weld strength, concrete bearing, and concrete breakout. You can see that the formulas are exposed with references to the latest ACI code. We go to the graph tab. We can see here in plan view and in elevation view the breakout area. This is the calculation. Please note that if the base plate is placed eccentrically on the support, the direction of the shear load is important in the calculation. As it still calculates the concrete breakout area correctly, if the load is applied in any direction, and in X and in Z. For example, if we go to the loads tab and we apply here a load of, say, 10 kips positive, we can see here that the program calculates the breakout area in Z as well. If we change the sign to minus 10 instead of plus 10, then the calculation changes. So the program is sensitive to the direction of the shear load in both X and in Z directions. As you can see, it's very easy to design shear logs in the new version of ASIP Steel 5, and it complies fully with the latest provisions in ACI 318. With this, we conclude the presentation of the overview on the design of shear logs. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you very much for your attention.